Hey there, it's Mike Cooch. In this video, I'm gonna share with you what I believe is quite possibly the most important skill that you can learn um, as an entrepreneur, as a human being, and um, I'm gonna share with you some of the particular strategies and techniques that I have learned around maximizing this skill. What am I referring to? That I'm saying that this is quite possibly the most important skill that you could possibly learn. That is to manage your state, to manage how you feel throughout your day, every day, so that you are uh, in the best possible condition to get the best out of yourself, and then therefore, get the best results from whatever situation you're in, whether that's doing work for your business, going into a sales meeting, um, communicating with your, your child, communicating with your significant other, um, going to work out, whatever it is, it was a big breakthrough moment for me um, when I attended Tony Robbins' uh, Unleash the Power Within event. I've been a student of Tony Robbins for uh, my entire adult life, but I had never attended the live events. And by studying his materials, I knew logically um, the content he was teaching. I knew it very, very well, and I've done, I think, largely a good job of applying it in my life. But by attending the event, uh, I understood the importance of this concept at a, at a gut level, not just a logical um, you know, level of understanding, not just a cognitive level, but at an emotional level, at a gut level. And it's really changed how I um, think about it and it's changed, about, it's changed how I approach my day pretty dramatically. So at that event, Tony Robbins um, teaches the idea, and it's one that I've, again, I've just completely, uh, you know, adopted now, is that your state, your moment-to-moment -moment state, and your ability to manage that is one of the single most important or maybe the most important thing in determining the quality of outcomes of your life. And that's a big statement to make, but if you think about in any situation that you've ever been in in your life that's important to you, um, and maybe, maybe think about a situation that you have had repeatedly, so conversations with a significant other, conversations with your children, um, going on uh, sales calls. Um, maybe you're an athlete, so participating in a, in a competitive sport. In any of those situations where you've experienced, because you've done them so many times, you've surely experienced the variability of results and, and kind of quality of, um, of outcome that you were able to achieve over time in those, in those um, you know, repetitions of doing that. And if you think back to why that is, um, you will find, I'm sure, that in most cases, the difference in performance from one case to another, from that one conversation that you had with your significant other or your child or that one performance out on the field in, in the sport of your choice, it's how you approached it how you were in the peak state or not in your peak state to, to really go for the outcome that you were trying to achieve. Um, so th this is the reason why you know, pro football players, before they go out on the field, are cracking helmets and smacking each other and yelling and jumping up and down and they've got music playing in the stadium. It's because they know that they have to get in peak state to perform their very best at that level. But it's easy for us to see. I, I like to use the sports kind of metaphors or analogies or whatever the heck they are because it's easy for us to look at a pro athlete and know are they ready for the game, right? You can physically see it on somebody. Like that guy is fired up, ready to play. He's going to go out there and be an animal on the football field or not, right? They're, they're just not into it. They're not giving it their all. They're not ready. They don't have their game face on. And you know the difference in performance that you're going to expect from that player. But the same thing is true about you and I in every moment of our life. This is not reserved just for athletes, okay? This is true of you and I in every moment of our life. When we go and have a conversation with our kid and maybe our kid is being a little bit of a turkey or whatever, or I've had a stressful day at work or a combination of those things, 
the quality of that engagement with my kid is going to be based on my ability to put myself in the right state to engage with them in the right way. Otherwise, I'm gonna snap at them, I'm gonna yell at them, I'm gonna say something to them that's gonna make them feel bad, um, and, I, and then I'm gonna feel bad because I did something that I know I didn't wanna do, but I, I let my state drive my behavior. Same thing, of course, in conversations with your significant other. Anybody who's had a relationship with somebody long-term knows that you've had those moments where you're just not feeling it, you're not really in control, of yourself and then you say something that you regret and you guys have to dig out from under that for a period of time. It's, it's you know, we're human, uh, it happens. Um, but this, this plays out in every area of our life, all day, every day, all day, every day, right? Our, our lives are ultimately, um, you know, just all of these moments kind of stacking up. So, if you think about it, if you think about the fact that you are going into your day and throughout your day without a conscious, deliberate strategy to manage that state most effectively, it's kind of it's kind of crazy, right? It's kind of crazy to think that you would allow yourself to do that. Um, and the reality is, as we know. Uh, you know, as a society, so many people are having trouble managing their state, right? This is why um, antidepressants are, you know, prescribed like crazy. Um, and people struggle with things like their weight, or they struggle with alcoholism, or they struggle with drugs and things like that. It's because people are trying to find something that puts them in a better state. And unfortunately, one of the other things that, that I learned from Tony Robbins is that we can solve problems in a healthy way or we can solve problems in an unhealthy way. People are achieving the state that they're looking for through drugs, through overeating, through addiction, um, you know, various types of addiction because it does give them some sort of state that they're looking for, even if it's a very unhealthy way to get it. So we have to learn the healthy way to get to that state. Um, as an entrepreneur, uh, this is incredibly, incredibly important because you are driving everything in your business and almost every entrepreneur I know is a pretty emotional human being. I, and, and I say, I mean, we're all obviously emotional human beings, but what I mean is that most of the entrepreneurs I know kind of rev you know, at a higher level than, than just the average person. Um, you know, we get fired up. We, you know, we use that to take action and make decisions. Um, but if you're not developing your skills to consciously manage that, to make sure that you're using that as a tool most effectively, it can go the other way, right? Most entrepreneurs that I know experience depression and experience anxiety at levels that I think also the average person is not aware of because it, it's a tough oftentimes a very difficult choice to be an entrepreneur and experience the highs and lows that go with it. Um, so I, I think as entrepreneurs, it's even more critical that we are very deliberate about our approach to managing our state. Um, so that being said, ho hopefully you are, you are convinced of the importance of this. And I think that that's the most, that's, that's the first step, right? get convinced about the importance of, okay, in every moment throughout my day, I can either approach that moment in an optimal state or a suboptimal state. And if I could make sure that I can approach every moment at an optimal state or as close to it as possible, my life is going to be better. I'm going to get better results in all areas of my life. Um, that's step one is believe that. Step two, I wanna share with you some of the skills that I have learned that have really helped me. And again, I give credit to Tony Robbins for all of this. Um, he teaches that there are three things that really drive your state on, at any given moment throughout the day. One is, what are you focused on? What are you focused on? And you know, the, the, the classic example is um, you know, being able to see somebody who's really focused on something pretty negative and they can be in the exact same experience as somebody who's focused on something more positive and you can see the difference in their experiences. So everybody's been out to a restaurant with a group of people where one person 
you know, was really obsessively focused on something that was going wrong there at the restaurant. The service was too slow. The food wasn't hot enough. The, you know, whatever it is that got them kind of, you know, <laughs> off the rails a little bit and they're miserable and they're making other people miserable because they can't stop talking about it, you know, and yada, yada. And then there's eight other people at that table or four other people at that table or whatever that are having a great experience regardless of the fact that the service is a little slow and the food was, wasn't as hot as you wanted and all that good stuff because they're focused on the group of people that they're with. They're focused on the company and the relationships and the conversation. Um, that's just a, a very, like I said, just a very obvious example, but something that we've probably all experienced where, hey, I could focus on the problems with the service or I can focus on the fact that I'm here with good company and, and this is an opportunity to engage in that regardless of whether the food is perfect or not. Um, that happens throughout our day, all day. Um, you certainly experience throughout your day periods of time where you're focused on something negative. You're focused on what could go wrong. You're focused on the potential downsides instead of the potential upsides. Um, and that changes your state. That absolutely changes your state, you know? Um, so the second thing um, is the language that you use or the meaning that you assign to something, okay? Um, language is really, really um, tied to our mind and our feelings, right? And um, you, you can all think of, um, you know, words that if somebody says to you, you would get pretty darn heated, right? Pretty fast or said those words to somebody that you cared about, um, you would get pretty heated pretty fast. And the reason why is because those words mean something to us um, and they, they trigger emotional responses. So if you think about the choice of words that you use when you are focused on different things, right? Am I focused on the positive or focused on the negative, focused on the opportunity or focused on the downsides? Um, the words that you use to represent those things are very different, okay? Um, so, and these are, all of these things are very closely tied together. So they don't just operate in a vacuum, but they're all different levers that you can pull to impact your state. And the third one, and by far the most important one is your physiology, your physical state. And it's, inc it's incredibly important to understand that this is the most important one by far. And he, he says, you know, it's the foundation of all effective change is your physiology. Um, and our mind and our body are very, very directly connected. And the, the big um, takeaway from understanding that is that the fastest way to change your state is to change your physical experience. Um, and that is, again, why you see the football players jumping up and down, cracking helmets, you know, hitting their shoulder pads, all that good stuff before a game is because they are using their physical bodies to get their mind and emotion in the right place so that they will then go out and use their physical bodies most effectively in the game. Um, the, uh, again, takeaway for you is to understand that there are these very simple but very powerful little hacks that you can apply or technique strategies that you can apply in your day to make sure that you are putting yourself in a peak state. So let's talk about what some of those are. One, are you getting enough rest? Okay, are you eating well? Right, to me, and, and are you getting exercise? Rest, eating well, exercise. To me, that's the foundation of everything for me. That is the foundation of everything for me. I'm not a great sleeper. I don't like to sleep a lot, and I know that about me. Um, so, but I also know that when I get to a point where I'm run down on sleep, I can't do anything effectively. Like, my brain is in a totally different place. My emotions are in a totally different place. I make sure that when I recognize that I'm there, I don't make any important decisions because I literally know that I will I will put myself at real risk of making poor, important decisions because I'm just tired. I'm not in a good place when I'm that tired. So for me, getting enough sleep, getting enough exercise and eating well, I know that if I do those three things consistently, mentally, I'm almost bulletproof. 
Um, I was born, I think, with a very just high natural tendency towards optimism and, and being in a positive state. Um, and those three things I have found are the foundation of keeping it there. It is absolutely the case for me. So if I do those things consistently, I find that I am, I'm pretty tough to get down. But I will admit, um, and this is, this is probably the first time I've said this publicly, um, but over the last several years of my life, I have dealt with some real down periods psychologically. And um, that, again, that was a first, a first for me. Um, I've never really had any challenges with, um, in any sort of long-term way with keeping myself in, in the right state, but I was challenged by that. And that's why I ended up going to the Tony Robbins event when I did, because I knew that, you know, I needed some, some extra, you know, strategies and, and encouragement to help me out there. Um, the realization for me was that it was more than just sleep and exercise and stuff for me. Even, even if I was doing that well, you know, there's a possibility that the things that I'm focused on, the language that I'm using, the questions that I'm asking myself were putting me in a bad spot. So um, let me just share with you a few things that I have found that on a day-to-day -day basis and throughout my day can really, really impact me beyond just the nutrition, the exercise, and the sleep. Um, first one, um, and this is something um, you'll see in uh, Tony Robbins' um, documentary and stuff, he has cold plunges at all of his houses. And the first thing that he does every morning is jump into the cold plunge. He just walks right out there and jumps into it. It's you know 50 degrees or whatever, which 50 degree water is shockingly, shockingly cold to, to jump into. Um, so I don't have a cold plunge, but what I do have is a cold shower. And um, first thing I do, um, you know, anytime I'm getting into the shower, but most days, first thing I do every day is I hop into a cold shower. Um, I don't, I, uh, it's not even to shower. It's to just go in there and experience that real cold sensation um, because that cold has a real impact on me physiologically. Like it gets the heart rate going, it clears out the cobwebs, it's very, very stimulating. And um, that can immediately just jolt me into this just heightened state. Um, so, and it, and it does not feel good to, to make the decision to get into that shower every day, I gotta tell you, Especially when it's first thing in the morning, it's cold out and all that type of stuff, to get into a cold shower is not always the best thing. <laughs> or it doesn't always, um, the anticipation of it is not always a great thing. But when you do it and you train your mind that, hey, I'm, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna put myself in a peak state no matter what, um, it's a very, very powerful thing. It's a very powerful habit. So that's one thing. Um, second thing, uh, this is a pretty new addition for me in my life is music. I've never been like a real big music guy. I know most people are you know, huge music fans and a big reason why is it puts you in a particular state. That's never been something that I've really identified with until recently, and now I've learned to use music and the right music as a tool um, to help me manage my state. Now, most of the time when I'm working, I'm listening to music. Um, certainly, um, you know, when I'm around, you know, cooking and hanging out with the kids and things like that, I'm listening to music because it helps put me in that right state. Um, another thing is asking what I call power questions. Okay, and we talked about the, the focus, how important that is to control your, um, your um, state. And what I have found is that when my state starts to slump, it is oftentimes because in my head, I've got this track going where I'm asking just stupid questions. I mean, they are, they're, they're, they're stupid questions. And the reason I say they're stupid questions is because all that can come from them is to put me in a shitty state. Like I'm, I'm not getting any good output from asking the questions or anything like that. So the types of questions I'm talking about, we've all experienced, right? Is why am I so bad at this? What, you know, when you're younger, when you're adolescent in particular, right? Why doesn't anybody like me? You know, blah, blah, blah that type of stuff. Those are just shit questions. There's nothing good that can come from them, literally, um, other than to make you feel bad. But when you're asking those questions, you're focusing your brain on answering those questions and your brain comes up with answers. 
So when you're a, a you know, young kid and you're asking questions like, why doesn't anybody like me? And you continue to focus on that, your brain starts giving you answers. Oh, you're too this, you're too that, and they're, they're stupid answers. The same thing happens when I'm thinking about my work and my business strategy and you know, doing a sales call. Sometimes I ask myself stupid questions. So I have literally created a series of what I call power questions that are good, solid, healthy questions that when you ask them, you can't help but get better answers. So I've created a series of questions um, that helps make sure that I'm focusing on the right things and getting good quality answers from my brain. Um, so just as an example of this, so I don't just leave that hanging as an example, um, you know, uh, you, could, you could ask the question, how can I lose 30 pounds? Okay, you could ask the question, let's, let's go through a variety of them here so we can understand the differences. You could ask the question, why am I so fat? Okay, you could ask the question, how could I lose 30 pounds? Okay, totally different questions, right? One of them, obviously so fat, it's focused on the emotion and it's negative. How could I lose 30 pounds? Okay, at least now we're moving in the right direction. We've created a question that gives us a target. Um, it gives us something that um, we're moving towards and hopefully by, by asking the question how, my brain starts to look for strategies, right? It starts to look for strategies to answer the question. Well, you could do this, you could do that. Um, so it helps you know, move you in the right direction and, and puts you in a state of, okay, I'm, I'm, I have the potential to make some progress here. I think I could solve this problem. But then another better question would be, how could I lose 30 pounds and enjoy the process along the way? Think about how powerful that is because how many people lose weight but are miserable and then just put the weight right back on because they haven't changed their state along the way and food was a way for them to achieve that state that they were looking for. So then they turn right back to food and they put the weight back on. So by asking a question, how could I lose the 30 pounds and enjoy the process along the way, I'm creating a whole new set of potential answers where I am not only addressing the weight loss issue, but I'm also addressing the issue of managing my state by finding enjoyment in it. You know, because I could lose weight by starving myself, or I could lose weight by um, eating better foods and going on walks in the woods every day, which I love walking in the woods. Okay, great. So now instead of starving myself, I'm gonna try these strategies because I know that they'll be more enjoyable. So having those, those power questions readily available to you, and I'll just give you some, some other examples of the ones that I've created for myself. So coming home after a long day of work, trying to build a business, stressed out, all that type of stuff, tired, I found that what I would do is I would walk into my house and I would not be in a great state. And that's when my kids see me for maybe for the first time that day. That's when my you know, significant other sees me maybe for the first time that day. And I realized, God, if, if that's the case and I'm walking into the house and I'm just carrying kind of my junk and my lethargic you know, energy and stress and stuff like that into that first interaction, what a terrible, you know, what a terrible precedent to set. It's not what I wanna do. So I literally had a power question that was inside of my car so that when I pulled up to the house, I would read the power question. The power questions were you know, things like, um, are things like, um, you know, what do I need to do before I walk in, the, before I open the door to make sure that I'm in my best possible state? And that could be that, hey, I'm gonna give myself, you know, a minute here in the car before I walk in to do some breathing, um, to crank some music that I love, to, um, you know, uh, get, get focused on some different things, um, you know, whatever it is. But I, I just gave myself the opportunity to pause and address it. And I, I would like to think that that's made a real big difference in how you know, my children in particular are perceiving me um, every day when I'm, I'm having the opportunity to interact with them. Um, so those, those types of questions you can design for yourself to make sure that you are doing what you can to put your focus in the right place um, to help you be in the right state. Um, I would recommend all of you go and watch, um, if you do a search for Tony Robbins priming, 
Uh, he starts every day with a pr priming approach. You'll hear a lot of people talk about they start every day with meditation. Um, I've never had good success with meditation. He's never had good success with meditation. So it was helpful for me to see what he does because he still does um, what may look something like meditation to a lot of people, which he's sitting there, eyes closed, breathing, um, because you know the importance of your breath and, and managing your state is absolutely undisputed. Um, but he's also doing like some exercise to it. It's, it's a more vi vigorous process, really gets his blood flowing. And then he's using series of questions and series of um, kind of visioning exercises while he's going through it. And it's just like a 10 minute thing. But he does that every single day for 10 minutes every morning to help make sure that again, he's starting his day in the absolute best place to get the best results. Um, and it's kind of hard to argue with his results. Um, and it was one of the most um, eye-opening things to me. He was up on stage at his event and, and he, you know, he said it was kind of like, how, how many of you look at me like I'm kind of you know, superhuman? You know, just, be, just be honest. And of course, everybody in the crowd is like, yeah, I mean, the guy is six foot nine. He literally gets up on stage at these events with no notes, no nothing, and speaks at an incredibly high energy level for 16 hours straight, doesn't take any breaks. I mean, it's, it's crazy. He's built businesses worth you know billions of dollars, billions of dollars in revenue combined now, um, from everything from his training business to um, resorts in Fiji to you know I mean uh, the most cutting edge kind of um, uh, medical things that are going on. He's he's invested in a part of so many amazing things. You can't help but think he's superhuman. And so when everybody's responding like that, and he's like, okay, look, he's like, I want you to get it. He goes, you think of me that way and you're so amazed by all the things I've accomplished and all that type of stuff. And he's like, I'm here just telling you right now that I'm a normal human being who a long time ago was in a really, really shitty place who realized that I just had to manage my psychology every moment of every day as aggressively as I could if I wanted a better life and I've just never let up. And you know, he, he said, if it's this important to me that I think it's the most important thing that I do every day is to get up, do a cold plunge, do my priming routine and have these, you know, strategies throughout the day to make sure that I'm staying in my peak state. If I think that it's the absolute most important thing that I do to achieve the life that I've achieved, don't you think that you guys should treat it with that level of importance as well. And that really struck me because it's like, here's this guy giving you the keys to the kingdom because he's telling you, look, all the, the business strategies that you learn and relationship strategies that you learn and all that type of stuff, they're all super, super important. They're the blueprints to success. But if you are in a shitty place trying to execute that blueprint, it's not going to work the same way as it's going to work for somebody who's in a really good state trying to execute that blueprint. And that makes all the difference because intellectually, logically, you can learn pretty much anything and everybody knows way more than they need to be successful in any area of their life. The challenge is executing it and executing it comes from your state. So I hope that this was helpful for you again, perhaps the most important life skill that you can invest in um, and certainly has just been a massive game changer for me um, in, in applying these strategies, just these little things, but every day throughout the day to make sure that I'm, I'm lit up, I'm switched on, I'm not um, looking at things in a negative way, I'm not lethargic, I'm not um, uh, focused on the wrong things helps me bring my A game to every situation. And it is a constant work in progress. That's the other important thing to understand. It is a constant work in progress. Every day throughout the day, we all experience those emotional setbacks and you know that, that you know, yuck kind of feeling or that slump or whatever it is. We all experience it. It's your ability to use these tools to quickly turn it around and get back into a better place that can make a massive, massive difference in the quality of your decisions, 
um, the quality of your influence um, and impact and um, your execution of things makes a massive, massive difference um, throughout your day So, and ultimately throughout your life. So I hope that this is helpful for you um, and I hope that you can apply some of the things that I've shared with you today and I really, really, really encourage you if you get the opportunity, go to one of Tony Robbins' events, make that a priority, um, study his materials. I'm, I'm just such a huge fan of it. I can't say enough about it. Um, but regardless, find what works for you. Just invest in what works for you and make that a priority because the impact of it, I think, will have incredible benefits for you over the course of your life, all right? Thank you very much for tuning in. It's been Mike Cooch, um, and uh, take care, manage that state, get out there and kick ass.